Here we have a very good project because we learn quite a bit about animation as we go through the process. And at the end of the exercise, we end up with a pretty good presentation technique too. The book is 3D, which means the pages can be turned either manually by the viewer using the cursor, control keys or the mouse, or we can program this automatically in the slideshow. The book is made up broadly of three parts. The front cover, as it opens and reveals page one and two. The back cover, how we end the book when we close our slideshow. And of course, the pages in between. We also have options with our book. We can have images covering entire pages. In fact, the images can become the pages if we want. Or we can create pages with a texture, such as I've done here. And we can arrange images and text on those pages, video too, if we really want to. One of our first decisions is what size book we're going to make. Well, let's keep that to our standard 1920, 1080 pixels. And if we put all of the files within a frame, we can use the frame as a parent to make size adjustments at any time. To speed things up, I've created some artwork to enable us to get straight into the pictures to exe part of putting our book together. But what we have here is no great mystery. If you look at the size of the book covers, for example, if you look down at the bottom, you can see they're exactly half the size of our 1920 1080. And the pages are just a little bit smaller than that, so that when the book cover opens, it looks correct with the page within it. Now this graphic that I've just put on screen explains what I mean there, and all it really means is if we're going to create the cover at 1080 in height, pixels, 960 in width, because that's half of the 1920, the pages are made at 1050 pixels by 945 and that just gives us this little gap around the outside edge which looks right. Now we are going to need an image editor to create the cover and the pages of our book but I think I'll keep that video slightly separate so we can get straight into the pictures to exe work here. Now the files you can currently see in the folder called 3D Book Artwork are pretty easy to create. In fact, we can use practically any version of Photoshop or any version of Photoshop Elements to do this. So let's make a start making our 3D book. Let's start with just a couple of blanks. Going down to the slide list, I'm going to hit Alt S and Alt S. I'm going to worry about the front of my book and how that appears on screen later. For now, I just want to create the cover and the cover opening to reveal pages 1 and 2. So let's select the second blank and open the objects and animation screen. I'm going to go straight to the top left of my screen and create a frame. No great need to rename the frame here we're going to put most of the files that we need for our book within the frame. So let's think what we want first. Well, we want the cover. Now, in fact, I've created two covers in the artwork, and I've called one front cover and one back cover. In fact, we didn't really need to do that. We could have used just one cover for both. But it gets a little confusing sometimes with names, and I felt it would be easier if we used the front cover and a back cover, particularly when we were going through the techniques of putting the book together. So right click the frame, we're going to add a child to the parent, and I want to pick up an image. If we navigate to where we're working, 3D book artwork, there's my front cover. Naturally the cover will drop into the center of our artwork and we want it to the right hand side. 
So we need to go to the center options here, right click the X and choose minus 100. And there's our book cover sitting on the right side of the frame. Now we need our book cover to open, so the front cover needs to be animated. Generally speaking, three or four seconds is enough for this. So I'm going to put my cursor in that sort of position. Hit Alt Insert to clone a keyframe. Need a bit of space here, I think, so I can see keyframe time. I'm going to drop my keyframe time back to four seconds. So between this point and this point, I need my book to open. So let's go to Rotate Y. And I can just click and drag, or I can right click the wire here and choose minus 180. Before we test this, let's go to the first keyframe and add some speed. Because we're going to see the animation start and end fully on screen, nothing is going to be hidden behind a fade on or off. In fact, that's something I need to do in a moment. We normally set this up with no fade whatsoever, but we'll come back to that in a moment. For now, all I've got here is a rotate, so I can go to my modifier and I can choose animation speed, smooth. A quick test by pressing play reveals that the page opens pretty well. Now the one thing you may notice while we're doing this with the book exactly the same size as our slideshow, we lose the effect a little bit. So make allowance for that, but just for this once I'll select the frame and drop the size down a bit and do that little test again. And you can see when the book is slightly smaller than the actual size of the slideshow, it seems to be much more effective. But working within a frame gives us flexibility here at any time. So let's reset that back to 100 by double clicking the X. So there's the first of the animation complete. And before I forget, I'm going to come out of my objects and animation screen. I'm going to go to File, Save As and start saving a project file. And I think I'll call this 3D Book. I'll call it 3D Book 1 because we may have different versions as we move forward. I'll save that. But I'm also going to go to my project options here and to my transitions because what I want here is I want nothing in there at all. I'm telling the software that all of the images I'm going to end up putting along here are going to have zero here. I think why we're doing that will become more evident a little later. Now let's go back into the objects and animation screen. So the next part of the animation is when our book cover turns over we would expect to see page one on the left and page two revealed on the right. But of course page two needs to be sitting over the cover. So one of the things we need to do next is to perhaps put the back cover in place. And we can do that by going back to our frame, right click, add an image, and we can put the back cover in its place. Moving it to the right by going to the center, right click, minus 100. The next thing we need to do then is to select the first keyframe, because that's where we're going to start, the front cover, and what we need to do is to put page one on the back of this cover. Now we need to do that using the parent and child relationship. So if we right click front cover and choose add an image. Now I'm going to put number one in here and you'll start to see exactly why we have put numbers on these just to help us to learn how the book works. Now the first thing we notice here is page one is hidden behind this page here because we've got page one under the back cover. So what we could do is select the back cover, hold the control key and page down. So all we're doing is putting 
the covers and the pages in the right order. Now of course if we want the page to be on the other side of this we've got a little bit of a problem here because if I move it here it's on the wrong side but if I want it to just be revealed on the other side it does mean that my page needs to be reversed reversed by doing something like this and again we can right click the Y and use minus 180 to turn it around and the reason for this will be evident in a moment the other thing we need to remember with the pages the pages have been made slightly smaller and pictures to actually will try to expand them to the size of the cover and the slideshow we're making so once we bring in a page we do need to go to the zoom the hyperlink on the right and select original size so we get that nice little step around the edge the other thing we need to do then is to move the center to the right and as you can see here it's a positive figure so to speed that up we can right click the X and choose it but there's an obvious problem here as we turn the book over it looks pretty good there but that's clearly not quite right we can put that right by going to the properties because now we need to say don't show me the back side of page one we only want the front side press play and there's the first page nicely opening now of course if we opened up a real book we may not find page one immediately stuck to the inside front cover so if you want to make your book more sophisticated and you want to add a couple of fly leaves then you can do that because the techniques are exactly the same as what we're doing here just make some extra pages and name them fly leaf and then you'll know exactly where they need to go so now we need our page two so going back to my frame right clicking add an image page two might be a good idea if we get straight into the habit of going to animation zoom hyperlink 100 percent an original size but all we need to do here then is to move it to the right so right click minus 100 but we've got that age-old problem again haven't we that it's being shown on this side so as we turn this over we can see two but we don't want to see it sitting on top but that's all to do with the stacking order over here on the right because don't forget this is rather like Photoshop or elements where we're looking down the layers so all we've got to do is select page two and move it down the stack control page down drops it down to that position and when I press play there we have it coming back to the main screen of pictures to XE let me press play to have a preview in the mini player and the first thing you'll notice is the cover appears instantly because we've turned off the use of any fade on or off so let's use another blank here to program the cover dropping into the right position so I'm going to go back to well let's stay with this one and hit Alt S because another blank should appear on the left now we can open this up into the objects and animation screen once again let's apply a frame and within the frame all we need here is just the front cover remember what we did before all we needed to do here was to move the center minus 100 so what I'm going to suggest here let me drop the size of this down a little bit I'm going to suggest we animate the book onto the screen and that's all we need is the front cover because the next image in our sequence picks up from that point so what do we want to do and how long do we want to do it well I reckon probably about five seconds let's put the cursor at that position and alt 
insert and I'll make it a nice round five seconds. So that's the position when we get to the second keyframe that the book cover needs to be. I'm going to suggest that what we could do amongst many things is we could have the book floating down from up here somewhere or even from the right. I think that's more of a personal choice but I'll use that side so I'm going to zoom it a little bit going to give it a bit of a 3D, let's go that way maybe we'll go up as well and of course we would need to remember to put speed on any of the changes we've made so let's do that while we're here and we're starting off the page here so here I would be selecting slow down because we're not going to see the animation start so animation slow down animation slow down so the book drops down into position something like that nice and gently not too happy with that I think I want a little bit more rotation to it let's try something like that press play that looks better that looks quite nice now we'll have a little preview in the mini player and you'll see exactly how that's affected how the slideshow starts with our 3D book there's the float down onto the screen we should see no change between slide 2 and slide 3 but then of course the book will open well that is the first part of our book complete the next stage is slightly different because when we turn over page 2 we have to have page 3 on the other side of that and page 4 in position but we also need page 1 so that can be seen as page 2 turns over to cover it so we need the animation to be slightly different but not much the principles are very much the same 